Okay, great. So before I start, I just wanted to thank thanks to the organizers and Shelly for being your chair. And of course, I mean, I'm surrounded by incredible uh, panelists. So thank you for being with me on this journey. So I'll, I'll, write, uh, I'll just write, uh, jump right in. So here I start. Um, as you can see here, a typed script from an interview Montreal decorator Janet Meunier gave to Radio-Canada in the spring of 1936, uh, which is part of her archives held at the Montreal of Fine Arts. We can read that she calls for more creators like Vanessa Bell and Charlotte Perriand amongst French Canadian women. Despite this plea for a woman's professional affirmation and creativity, Meunier text claims that the interior decoration is a natural and well-suited activity for women taking care of their family. She addresses the audience as Madame, which signals that she spoke to a wildly female audience. Here, the gendered assumption associated to interior decoration is not simply reflected in Muni's own practice. She also actively produced this association of women with, pri with private space and domesticity through the statement. This document further demonstrates the ambiguity at stake in her perception of her field in the 1930s. It brings forth the contradiction between her professional role as a trained decorator promoting modern design and the traditional cohesion between femininity and domesticity, she presumed. Jeannette Meunier, later known as Jeannette meunier Biela, is a Canadian interior decorator mostly active in the 1920s and 30s. Although her name is mentioned in most texts on the history of design and furniture in Quebec and in Canada, and apart from an article written by Rosalind Pipal that I see is among us today, only a small portion of her career is recognized. Her font states that her career ended when she married the Swiss artist André Bieler in 1931 and devoted herself to motherhood. Yet only two out of the 16 folders that make up the, her archive matched the usually recognized length of her career. This left me wondering what these 14 other folders shelved. Through this presentation, I focus on Janet Meunier's involvement in leaving traces behind that narrate her work. My intention is to offer a reflection upon the role of archives as site of a feminist investigation of new avenues considering women's contribution to modern design. Meunier's selection of documents and comments she provided um, testify of the ambivalent reality faced by women creators in the country and how the private sphere, more than just an entrapment into her gendered role, was a site of aesthetic exploration that remains to be considered. Started in 1960s and 1970s, the feminist project of recollecting names of women who had been excluded from different creative disciplines led in the 2000s to the exploration of women's involvement in the various fields of modern design. As design historian Penny Spark explains, the uncovering of their implication into design and decoration of the interior has raised questions regarding how their work fitted into the modernist narrative. Alike, Canadian craft historian Sandra Foley has written that the field of interior design was fraught with the baggage of gendered and materials, which are respectively women in everyday environment. This divide that Foley points out refers to the notion of separate spheres, this oversimplistic idea that with the advent of industrialization, middle-class men and women came to inhabit distinct environment, the public sphere of work for men and the private sphere of home um, for women. Deriving from women's traditional role as wife and mother, the care given to the domestic interior was perceived as a second nature. Nevertheless, as emphasized in Meunier's radiophonic text, the responsibility of women's role as arbiters of tastes, which was consistent with the social construction of the female gender, could lead them to challenge this notion through their sense of aesthetics. Um, so after after being trained at L'École des Beaux-Arts de Montréal, Jeannette Meunier was employed by the Interior Decoration and Display Department of Eaton Department Store in Montreal from 1928 to 1931. While working for this store, she was involved in two main creative projects. She um, curated the second exhibition of work by Quebec artists for the store's art gallery. And second, she participated in the elaboration of the decorating studio L'Intérieur Moderne, which was presented twice in 1928-29 and 1930-31, of which you can see um, different 
an article and um, a picture. Place at the beginning of our archival font, two simple folders containing 10 photographs and a letter followed by a few press clips make up of the, for the traces of a year at Eaton's. Written by Meunier in 1985, the letter was meant to explain the decorating studio, which she emphasized was conceived only by Emile Lemieux, head of the same uh, department whom she assisted. Interestingly, it challenges the narrative of design and furniture history in Canada that only credit Meunier for the studio. Whereas the curation of the exhibition in, is known as Lemieux, l'intérieur moderne is slowly attributed to Meunier. In 1929, she was the one to publicly explain to the mostly female audience of La Revue Moderne. You can see here on the left, uh, what this showcase living environment imagined by Lemieux and dictated by modern aesthetic tried to achieve. Hence, how this studio is acknowledged in both historical and contemporary texts brings forth the stereotype gendered and amateur nature of the decorating profession. Her archives allow us to experience the discrepancies between how the studio representing a home in the public sphere is remembered and how Meunier remembers it, which speaks of her position as a decorator and as a woman. She's considered more fitted to attend to the decoration of the home than Lemieux, whose mentorship though explains the modernity of her proposed decor. The recognition of Meunier's life work usually stops here after her departure from Eton and her marriage to André Biela in 1931. And yet, more evidences of her work she, of the work she accomplished as an independent decorator or store at the MMFA. While her career became closely affiliated with the domestic sphere, she took a recognizable pride in it as testified in the remaining traces. Um, her name and title are repeated, and, are repeated endlessly on the multitude of professional card and on various drafts for logos promoting her decorating business she has kept in her farm. Having settled on with André Bellier at 2039 Peel Street, their apartment served Meunier as a space for aesthetic exploration. Along the three folders containing various drawings of different object and design she imagined, one comprises a photograph of her apartment, of which you can see two here. Most probably they were taken for professional purposes, evoking decoration magazine with no trace of human presence. They could serve as illustration to potential clients of what she could achieve. For instance, uh, here I've brought up pictures uh, presenting the same desk in two different setup of the apartment. There's one in a corner with a door and a second one right in front of a window. This photograph revealed the doubleness noted by architectural historian Charles Rice between the three-dimensional space and the visual documentation of the home interior that allowed the image to transform an, an existing spatial interior into something other. This apartment on Peel Street acted for Meunier like a canvas, showcasing the versatility of her work as well as her home. This space was modified through her experimentation with different modern design trends, testing her training and important knowledge, especially in regards to European design. The modification of the couple's apartment as shown in the photographs explain how the domestic interior is not, a, is not fixed, but acts as a site, of a, a site representing women's changing position in society. As Penny Spark and Anne Massey have noted, the relationship between identity and space is, I quote, a dynamic process whereby individuals have created spaces through which to express themselves and or others, while those individuals have in turn formed their own identity in response to the spaces in which they have found themselves." End of quote. Meunier shaped her home through her decorating business, while her life as a married woman shaped her decorating practice. From 19... 36, like their Montreal apartment, the Meunier Bielas residence in Kingston also acted as a site of, his, of her aesthetic exploration. Along with photograph of Jeannette Meunier in her furnished living room, a small invitation card indicates that the house of Miss, Mr. and Mrs. André Bielas was part of a public guided tour of Kingston's finest home. The flexibility of her furniture alludes to the sense of choice she required for, in, for her environment she turned into a stage home from time to time. When she moved to Kingston, Janet Meunier also managed to be somewhat professionally active outside of her home. 
documents in her archive testify that she was involved in two different and in various different projects, more than just two. She was responsible for the layout of the music room of the Faculty Women's Club at Queen's University in 1947, but also she gave pub various public uh, lectures about interior decoration uh, organized by Queen's University, or um, she also gave lectures part of courses taught by her husband. In a letter from Queen's University, she kept which I have brought on the left. She was asked if she could provide further advice for the addition of an extra cabinet for the music room she had decorated. This letter states that her work as an interior decorator has remained uncompensated. By keeping this artifact, Meunier interestingly raised the issue of interior decoration as it considered intuitive and innate work for women and its lack of recognition. To conclude, together these traces we find in Janet Mooney's archive at the MMFA allude to women's identities through her elaboration of a visual language for the home that express her own lived experience as a woman and as a professional decorator. By considering her homes as site of, for creative exploration and expression of her identity, we can start to recuperate new ways testifying of, of women's involvement in shaping a, a taste for modern aesthetics in Canada. These traces of Meunier's work clearly expand the attributed course of her career and highlight how the domestic sphere was a space of aesthetic deliberation. This demonstrates how interior decoration was both a liberating and restrictive debating arena of female identities. Meunier's archive testify of how she navigated between her profession and identity as a woman, which brings forward the tension between her liberated design and expression of her femininity within a restrictive sphere. So thank you.